Well, hello everybody, it's uh, Richard here, and this is a part three of the Hamper gramophone. And uh, this afternoon I thought I'd do a few parish notices, but before then, the record you can hear in the background is um, Tommy Steele. And uh, he's, he's on a 10 inch that I forgot to mention as in part, I think part two actually, uh, when I mentioned Flanagan Allen and um, Primo Scala, uh, the accordion band. Uh, this is the cover. Um, this is from Tommy Steele, um, The Duke Wore Jeans, and this came out in 1958. Uh, there were only nine songs actually on the, from the film, and they're all on this 10 inch which, as you can see, has had a bit of a hard life down here. But uh, I haven't got any Tommy Steele um, records, so I was quite interested to pick this one up. Hidden, obviously, amongst many of the 12-inch, uh, often the case with 10-inch, and my collection's quite getting quite big now, so I'm really pleased about that. So um, I'll just turn Tommy off for a second so we can get on with the, the main business, as it were. I'll turn him down, actually. There we go. I also uh, wanted to give a shout out to a friend of mine. I've just literally today uh, received the Memory Lane issue, uh, issue 188 Autumn 2015. And uh, uh, my friend Jonathan Holmes has written an extremely good article in here, which I've been reading in the garden because the weather's been absolutely wonderful today. There's lots of really good stuff in here, but there's a nice article if I can find it. Um, Oh, so I must mention something else actually as well. Uh, George Scott Wood is mentioned in here and Jonathan's written a really nice piece about that. I'll just uh, turn uh, Tommy off now. There we go. Um, the other thing in here that I thought was, anyway, really, really interesting is there's a nice article by a chap called, where are we? Simon Broadley, who's written an article about Al Bowley's first wife, Rita Roberts, and a very tragic end to her. She actually committed suicide by putting her, her uh, head in a gas oven, and um, which I thought was a really sad end. She also was very much um, addicted to heroin and drugs, and um, after having a you know a fairly um, fairly charmed life I suppose though she was only married to L for a matter of days so it seems um, fell from grace and um, Simon's done a really good job researching her life so um, so I'd definitely advise um, getting hold of a copy of Memory Lane if you're interested in dance band music as always the other thing to mention is that the Memory Lane event is also taking place in October and um, it's £25 and it's being held at the Artist Club in London. Another good event that I've been to, I think it's two now, and thoroughly enjoyed my afternoon with uh, uh, people from the fraternity of Dance Brand and uh, Brandon Shaw is going to be um, showcasing with his rhythm makers and also if I can just find the place it's always the same whenever I whenever you're looking for something there's a where are we In here there's a flyer about it which I was reading about uh, we're actually going to be joined uh, Ray has said we're going to be joined by where are we Kate Gardner who's a pianist and singer so I'm looking really looking forward to that so Memory Lane, certainly worth the £15 a year um, and uh, loads of really interesting information if you're into dance band music in El Boli. That's that one. So last time I also mentioned that my friend um, Mr Goodsoul, who was playing Tommy Steele there, sounded a bit slow on occasions and um, it actually got worse. Though there's a bias on that particular deck, and if I take this off I'll just show you that. Um, that is a bias control, here we are. They call it variable speed. Um, it was getting worse, and uh, in the end, I was uh, I was having to bias it quite a lot, and it still was sounding as it, as the record got to the centre, it was even sounding really off key. Some of the tunes I was playing there, so I decided to change the belt, and I've done that. So this is the old one. I've just ordered a new one. I had one in my replacement box, uh, belt box. So how to do that? And you can hear the difference already this afternoon. So now the main part of this video is going to be part three of the hamper gramophone and things have moved on a little bit since the last one. Let me just get a drink here and I'll uh, 
couple of glugs of lemon juice. Right, so what's happened now is this. Remember last time we had this piece of MDF and the horn was in the process of being um, painted and de-rusted. That's now complete and it's now in place. This is just temporary so that I can see the spacing because the spacing is quite critical. I think I mentioned that last time to the whole process and uh, making sure that everything's in the right place so that um, when it fits into the casing, which I've done some more work, um, it all all works out. Um, I've fitted the brake now. Um, the only thing about this is that the brake, if it goes back too far, it actually fouls the turntable underside. So this is the turntable underside. And you can see there, there's these, sport, these strengthening uh, pieces here built in. If it comes back further when it's being when the brake's being taken off, it catches on these. So what I've had to do is do an adjustment. So with a, I'm putting a small a small screw in there, which actually just stops it fouling as you go back. So you can't go further back than that. But it works very well. I've managed to work that one out quite well. So that's in place. If I just turn this over, you can see the spacing a bit better. So that I worked it out just about right so everything's in the right place now so it's now screwed in place this of course are when I paint this um, boarding uh, probably a varnish yet nice dark mahogany brown color I'll take all this off the motor the Garrod number 20 is here and you remember I had to level up to make sure this came out at the right place um, and this obviously the motor needs a good old clean and refurb which I'll do and though I've given it a full wind, I haven't actually tested it out on anything. Um, the other thing is that I've sourced the tone arm, so the tone arm will go there. And I've made some holes to put the screws in, so that's that part. And then I've also did some more sourcing because the other thing I need to do is obviously find a little. Um, support for the end of the gramophone where the horn comes out so i've just started cleaning that there's a nice brass ferrule there um, which has a rubber bung inside which is there that fits in there because i'm going to use the short this is the short turnings handle and i'll show you the reason why i'm going to use that as opposed to the longer one because these are there's a difference here if i just move those two things out of the way um, that one and that one so, because it would depend, of course, on where the end of the screw comes. And I'll explain that a bit later. The other thing is, of course, I'll need to have something to support the tone arm. So I've managed to find in my spare parts box this little hook arrangement, which will fit quite nicely. And then this will fit on the back of the box, which I'll show you shortly. And then I'm going to make another hole uh, about the size of the of this one and where the tone arm fits I think it'll probably be about the same size with the screw saw the whole saw which I'll go in there which I'll probably put here for the needles to go in so that's what we've done so far oh yes and I've put the, uh, the the gauge for 78 fast and slow on here as well because I had to work that out remember so that's all the stuff on the motor board, which is looking good. The other bit I have done is with the actual um, casing. Now, with this, I've now put in the side supports, these side supports here. And um, if I remember rightly, when I said last time I did a video number on number two, it's quite critical that you make sure that there's enough room to put the horn in, because this is the front end. You'll notice there's a uh, a hole here and I'll explain about that obviously that's where the gramophone winding handle goes through um, so these are now in place and um, I had to reduce the size of this size a little bit because when the gramophone goes in when it goes in which I can probably show you if I do like that there we go I won't push that down because I'm doing some other work on there okay so the motorboard will fit in here and it's probably fouling a bit because I've just done some other work and I'll explain about that in a second on filling in the, the wood holes and that. Um, so it will fit quite nicely in there. The other thing I had to do, of course, was line up 
where this hole was going to come. Now that's a bit of that. I thought that's going to be a bit of a challenge. So what I did, I I measured. What I did, I measured the distances from where the actual winding mechanism is. As you notice I put a mark on there so I could see it. Once it was actually sitting inside on these supports, and then I measured from the inside where the marker was, where it was coming, which you can just about see here, a line. And then I put a brad hole in there. Um, where are we, are we? I'll show you the brad hole. I thought this was quite clever actually, it probably isn't for most people, but was I put a brad hole with a nice big point on it in the middle and then that it went through the wood and then it, it went straight into the centre of the winding mechanism link up and I knew I was in the right place then. After I did that I then drilled a very small pilot hole and did the same thing again using the drill end just to check and then I drilled a bigger hole and a larger hole and in fact this is a dead centre to where the winding mechanism is and I've had it I've actually wound put the put the little uh, cover on there support on there which is the one I showed you which is this one there we go and that fits in there like that and then supports the winding mechanism and I was and it was amazing that the shorter one, this one, actually comes out to about there. So you don't need the great big long winder, which is quite good. So I shall, I've started cleaning this up. Now I should do some more work on that before I finally give the end a bit of a black paint. So that's that bit. The other thing I decided to do, because there was all these, because this is made of ply, this was never a, intended for a gramophone. I filled the holes all in and I've rubbed it all down with a sanding machine. And then I thought, hmm, how am I gonna fill all this in? So what I've done now is I've just filled in with wood filler all those, not those edges that were showing. And I'm going to then sand this down finely, use some very fine sandpaper, and then obviously the whole thing will be varnished uh, with a nice gloss varnish, um, including the supports, because these are put in with and these screws I had to be careful because obviously the distance between here and the outside is quite critical. Um, Whether you know to make sure you don't put the screws through the through the side of the casing. So that was a little bit of a, a organisational bit too. So anyway, getting back to this bit. So I'm going to rub all this down, and then once that's been done, I will then varnish it. And I've done the same with the lid. Here's the lid, and the same thing here, just filling all the holes in sanding it down um, and just taking all the rough edges of it so all in all it's actually coming along very well now i'm quite pleased um, and uh, quite an exciting project um, having never done anything like this before from scratch but just using parts um, it was interesting just to note that on ebay i noticed that there was a, a gramophone there really a really nice looking gramophone case gramophone with some run, really nice light wood um, with nice marquetry inlay and um, it was made of parts <laughs> just made of parts like mine here but obviously the gentleman or whoever made it has taken a lot of time and effort to uh, to take you know so i mean they're they are out there and uh, they're quite unique machines actually and uh, you know that's uh, i think a bit of a plus so the other bit also just to men quickly mention is these screws i mentioned last time so these are the little brass screws i'm going to be using um for the catches these are the rear hinges these will be the rear hinges the original ones i can't see any reason why i won't be using these so that's that will be the top and that so I can see those reused, as I, and I'll probably find places to put the catches on. I might actually get a gramophone side strap handle actually as well, which would be quite nice, depending how things go. So there's those screws, and I also got some round heavy ones as well from home base. So there we go. So that's that little bit. I'm using the Ron Seal wood filler. This is the dark colour, as I said earlier. Um, I think that's about all today. That's about all I've been doing. So, uh, yes, oh, quite a lot really happening. And uh, thank you all for watching and uh, look forward to your comments.